Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and today you'll learn how to route a joint that will make you look like a woodworking master. Comparing a sliding dovetail joint to a simple dado, it's a lot like comparing a woodworker to his fellow man. He's stronger, better looking, and more versatile. There exists furniture with sliding dovetail joints that have remained solid for generations without any glue. Not only is this joint super strong, it's handy because it can reduce the need for clamps and make project assembly a lot easier. It's an excellent joint where wood movement is required, such as breadboard ends on a tabletop. And it's an undeniable fact that a well-executed sliding dovetail will make you look like a true craftsman. With all that payoff, you'd think that sliding dovetail joints would be difficult to cut. But as you'll see, they're deceptively simple. Today we'll discuss three of them. A standard sliding dovetail, a tapered sliding dovetail, and a shoulder sliding dovetail. I highly recommend watching this entire video because this is a skill that can really step up your woodworking game. Don't worry, we'll move pretty quickly. Now let's get started. You may make your sliding dovetail joint any size you like as long as your workpiece is thick enough. But here are a few basic guidelines that seem common in well-designed furniture. The depth of the dovetail socket is often about two-thirds of the thickness of the workpiece or less. A joint as shallow as an eighth of an inch will be plenty strong in hardwood. For standard three-quarter inch thick stock, a half inch dovetail bit is a good choice. The angle of the cutters is a matter of personal preference. Just because you're using a half inch wide bit doesn't mean your dovetail socket can only be a half inch wide. You can widen it with extra passes. However, you do want the bit and the socket you cut with it to be slightly narrower at the points than the thickness of the stock that will fit inside the socket. You'll see what I mean as we continue. Unless your work pieces are very small, it's unlikely that your router table has the fence capacity to cut the dovetail shaped sockets in the face of your panel, such as on the side of a bookcase or cabinet where you do a lot in a row. So this task falls to the handheld router and an edge guide much like a dado. In fact, many sliding dovetail sockets begin as dados. The first pass is made with a straight router bit that's no wider than your dovetail bit's neck to remove most of the waste. Then you follow that up with a second pass of a dovetail bit to complete the shape. This reduces the stress upon the narrow dovetail bit and it aids in chip extraction during the cut. The good news is, you don't have to move your edge guide between these steps. The location remains the same for both cuts with the straight bit and the dovetail bit. The bad news is, if you're working with really thick stock, you may have to make the socket wider with a second pass using the dovetail bit, and that will mean moving your edge guide. Thankfully, that's a rare situation because most furniture is built with stock about a three quarters of an inch thick, and wider bits are available if you have to work with extra wide material. I recommend purchasing a bit wide enough to cut your socket in one pass so you can minimize the chances for error that will come with moving your edge guide. I'll put a link in the notes below this video for my favorite dovetail bits. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. As a side note, if you're cutting a whole row of these, like for a bookcase, use two routers if you can, one for the straight bit and the other for the dovetail bit. It'll save you a lot of swapping back and forth and ensure that each cut is at a consistent depth. If you don't have two routers, I might even consider skipping that straight bit step and route the whole thing with just the dovetail bit. But if you do go that route, I suggest you make your socket a little bit shallower so that you can reduce the stress that you're putting on your bit. When you cut, remember to move your router from left to right so that it will naturally pull towards the edge guide and you get a nice straight cut. Another thing to watch out for is tear out as the bit exits the cut on the back side. This can ruin a good looking joint. The easiest way to manage this is to rotate your workpiece so that that cut bit is exiting on what will be the back edge where it's unlikely to be seen in the finished project. Or you can leave your workpiece a little wider than you need it and then trim the tear out away when you rip it down to the final width after all of your sockets are cut. While cutting the socket on the face of a workpiece is a handheld router operation, I think it's far easier to cut the matching tongues at the router table. You'll use the same dovetail bit to do it, you just have to set it up carefully. 
So use some sort of depth gauge to measure the depth of your socket and transfer that to the height of your bit above the table. Be precise, the quality of your joint depends on it. It's also important to be sure that your rudder table's fence is square to the table top, so check that and shim as needed. Set the fence so only the very point of your dovetail bit is exposed, and then run your workpiece against the fence on one face, then flip it over and run the other face against it. You'll find that a push block on the face of the board will help keep it flat against the fence, and a scrap behind the workpiece will help push it forward and keep it perpendicular. Check the fit, which will probably be too tight in your socket, then move your fence back, exposing just a little bit more of your dovetail bit, and repeat the process on both faces. Keep testing and cutting until you get a good fit. It can be easy to overshoot and make your joint too loose. So I recommend dialing in the setup with the scrap of wood first, then leave your fence locked where it is and cut all your joints in the project at the same time. Keep in mind that the bit will only cut consistently if you keep that workpiece flat against the fence. It's a good idea to, even after you're done, take an extra pass on each face, just to be sure you didn't let up the pressure and tilt the board a little bit during the cut. If a sliding dovetail joint is excessively wide, it can be nearly impossible to assemble it, especially when you put glue on it and the moisture swells the fibers up. That's why wide joints are better tapered. A tapered sliding dovetail fits together loosely at first, but it tightens up as the tongue fully slides in the socket. And it can be done by adding just a couple of steps to the process we just described. After you cut your dovetail shaped socket on the face of your workpiece, Move the end of your edge guide that's at what will be the back edge of the joint away from the socket by a sixteenth of an inch. Move only that end, pivoting the other end it's in its original place. Then take another pass with your router and dovetail shape bit. This will taper the socket. Now for the tongue. Before you run your workpiece on edge at the router table, tape a one sixteenth inch thick shim on the face of the workpiece that is near the rear edge of the joint. Make sure to keep it high up enough so that the router bit won't hit it as you cut. Then run the workpiece on both faces just as we did before. This will create a matching taper on the tongue half of the joint. A tapered sliding dovetail is properly fit when it slides together easily right up to the last half inch or so, which can be seated with a light mallet tap or two. Traditionally, a lot of sliding dovetails were shouldered, which gives them a more complex look but a shouldered sliding dovetail joint is well within the grasp of anyone who's mastered the standard sliding dovetail. In this case, you'll first cut a dado with a straight router bit that's the same thickness as the workpiece that's going to have the dovetail tongue on it. I usually go about an eighth inch deep with that dado. Then, without moving my edge guide, I'll use the same two-step process to cut the dovetail shaped socket in the bottom of that dado first with my narrower straight bit, then with my dovetail bit. Remember, don't go any deeper than about two-thirds the thickness of your workpiece. When you transfer the depth of that to the router table, measure from the shoulder of the first dado, not from the face of the workpiece. This is the height you must set your dovetail bit above the router table. Then mill the tongue just as before. Easy peasy. Sliding dovetail joints can be used whenever a dado may have been. They look better, they're stronger, and they make project assembly a lot easier. Try them out and see for yourself. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.